Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, we'll be looking at advanced tracking inside of the radar builders. Again, we're looking at both 2D and 3D radars at the same time. So you can follow along here, Pro Radar Builder, 2D or 3D radar builders. Now, where we left off last time was here on these uh, plain but fine looking radar systems. So we're gonna make these better, improve. Uh, we're gonna do some optimization of it. We're going to include some tracking lines and we're going to be making use of a lot more of the functions inside of the radar builder. And we're just going to quickly uh, start with the 2D radar. Now, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to group these enemy objects together and I'm going to make them rotate around in world space so that we can see our blips moving around. And that makes things a little bit more interesting. Now, this uh, these tutorials will be in two parts. This is going to be part one. It's going to be part two of the advanced tracking systems, and if necessary, a part three. So let's just go ahead and uh, begin setting this up. So I'm going to create a new empty game object, and then just call it enemies, and I'm going to just drag and drop all of the enemies inside of this object here and I'm going to add a script to it called called rotate this object now this this script comes with the radar builder so you're fine you could just follow along with it you just add this script to it it comes with the tool extras folder so you just find it and add it to it and we're going to set the X rotation value to about uh, three. I'm gonna go two and four, and turn off use gravity. All right, and that's that. So now our enemies will be moving around. And the next thing that we're gonna want to do here to set up this tracking is for the two D radar. I'm gonna find this two D radar and under our center object here we're gonna scroll down we just use sprite we're not using prefabs um, for the advanced uh, additional options here i'm gonna open that out and we have this option of always show player in the radar now if we turn this on what that means is that um, if we're panning around inside of the radar, our player will not be called once it leaves the uh, calling zone of the radar itself. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn back on gizmos here to show you what these calling zones are. Oh, we're in scene here, just, just gonna go to our designs area here, turn on visualize for the 2D radar. Quickly find the 2D radar, not the sphere. There we go. Gonna look at that from the front. All right, now you see the red line around it. We just turned on visualize. Now in our blips area, we said we're gonna use always show player in the radar. And um, what that allows us to do is to uh, always keep track of the player inside of the radar. Now I'll show you where this comes in handy when we start looking at uh, the pan and the pan functions of the radar itself. And it's quite interesting because it allows for you to uh, look around inside of your world without having to move your character around. So we're just gonna go to designs area here. I'm gonna look at the scale function. Now let's take a look at what these mean. So currently, use local scale is turned off. Now what that means is that if we run our scene and we try to scale the radar using the scale tool here, we won't be able to scale it because it's using a static value of one for the uh, diameter. So we can scale the radar from in here and the red uh, gizmo here represents the radar's diameter. We're going to set that back to one and what we're going to do, we're going to turn on use local scale just in case at runtime we want to mess with the scale of our radar. 
Now we also have another function right on function right underneath that called uh, ignore diameter scale. Now let's go ahead and run the scene and show you how these work. So ignore diameter scale when your radar is scaled, uh, the diameter increases. However, the diameter divided by two that gives us a radius. The radar will only scale by half. By the radar will only scale through the uh, through the through the x and the y axis by the radius. So if we go ahead and turn that on, and we um, just go ahead and grab our. Actually, we're going to turn off use local scale so that we can scale it from here, and we begin scaling it. We'll notice that. Uh, part of the radar gets lost over the screen. So if we're using shaped radars, which are radars that can be of any shape, um, it'd be good to use the ignore diameter scale. Else we just turn that off. All right, now we can just exit play mode. And we just set that back to use local scale. All right, good. Now I'm going to be showing you the scene scale value. Now scene scale determines how much the radars can see. And I'm showing you here in the 2D radar, but the functions for the 3D radar are this very same. Um, let's go ahead and just select that 3D radar really quickly. Now, if we open this out, we'll notice that we have uh, another function here called inner calling zone. And I'll get to that a little bit later. We also have that for uh, we have that in the 2D radar here. So let's go ahead and change the scene scale. The scene scale value, as I mentioned before, determines how much the radar can see. So if we increase that scene scale value, we can see more. If we reduce the scene scale value, we'll see less. So let's reduce that scene, increase that scene scale value so that we can uh, zoom out and see our blips. There we go. All right. Now for the inner culling zone, let's go ahead and turn on the gizmos here so you can see the uh, culling zones. The yellow zone here, the yellow gizmo here, represents our tracking bounds. If we increase the tracking bounds, we allow the radar to uh, render more, or even outside of the radar design space. So we're going to set this back to one. Now the inner calling zone, as you, you, you guess what the function is for this, it makes sure that anything that enters the inner calling zone gets called. Now, sometimes when you're using the inner calling zone, you will not see an object get called immediately because what we're doing is that we're translating the object's position in world space that's using the X, Y, and Z uh, position into this flat 2D uh, radar, which is only uh, displaying to us what we can see uh, moving through an X and Y position. So if an object in world space is moving up through the Y axis, then its height may be too, uh, too, too great for the inner calling zone. So we won't see it get called until it moves down into the calling zone. So if we increase that inner calling zone here, let's see if we see that happen. So it's going to enter that zone. It may be too high above the calling zone to enter it. But if we increase the inner calling zone some more, what we'll see is that they get called. And that's the moment that they actually enter the calling zone. So let's exit play mode and inside of the 3D radar, we can see this much more clearly. So let me just go ahead and select the 3D radar here. And we've already gone over what the scene scale is, the inner calling zone, uh, tracking bounds, radar diameter, and the use local scale. We're going to turn on use local scale for the 3D radar also. And we're going to go ahead and run the scene again. And the one thing that we're going to want to do here um, inside this 3D radar is that I'm going to start moving around the uh, values for the tracking bounds and the inner calling zone 
for the 3D radar so you get a, a better idea of how these zones work. So let's increase the inner culling zone here. I should actually turn on the visualize. There we go. Let's increase the inner culling zone. And what you'll realize is that once an object now enters this inner culling zone, they're going to get culled because it's a more ac accurate representation of the blips uh, position in the world. So there we go. And one enters, gets called. Another enters and gets called. All right, gonna set this back to zero. And let's try the tracking bounds here. Let's increase this. Let's now decrease this. And we're gonna call a bunch of these blips. I'm gonna set that back to one. There we go. All right, in the next video, what I'm gonna be looking at is uh, setting up the tracking lines and base trackers for the uh, 3D radar. And then we'll start to see this 3D radar really start to come together. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.